how does the man in the moon cut his hair? And I go, running. Mm. I don't wear Darth Vader boxer shorts when I go, running. <laughs> I don't know. Eclipse it. John oh, Arbon. as Dan likes to call him, John Arbon. Yes, I just did. Okay. E eclipse it. <laughs> Tweedy Neps. Yeah. That sounds like the name of a character from a famous five novel. Yeah. How she finishes off her round. <laughs> He's like a ghillie type. Yeah, he does, yeah. He's always, he always wears boots. Yeah. And he's carrying a fish. It's Tweedy Nets. It's Tweedy Nets. Why is that? Too literally. Oh, like you were, you mean? Yes, yes. Where's Is I've always been a tucked in man. You have. Well, those it's days... There's lots of information for you, isn't it? Yeah, I know, I don't know. I don't know. So's yours. We're both careful. Uh-huh. I don't know if there's something in the water. Chances we went to the disco the night we met. Oh, we did. And you weren't 21. Welcome back. Oh, yes. It's loud. It is episode 111 and it is an exciting... 111. Yes. It, it's a big day. And it's a big day because we finished off all our spring and summer programming last episode. And today, for the last two weeks, in fact, things have been happening. Wheels have been turning. Meetings have been taking place. <laughs> Did you feel a disturbance in the force? Yes. We had a very high-powered meeting. We did. The Baker and Bear's advent calendar filming yep. has been fixed. That will commence very soon, actually. Yeah, yeah, Which, very soon, actually. It, I don't know. It just... It seems... What, what is it? We're almost in November, to, but, be, to be fair, aren't we? Why is it that life speeds up as you get older? Oh, it does. I don't yeah, understand yeah. that. It does. Well, it does. And I was talking to Bryony about this only this morning because... Every morning for the last few days, she's been like, oh, it's like so many days to my birthday. Oh, Don't wish that. it away. Yeah. And she's, you know, it's not that long till her birthday now. It's just a few days. And she's like, oh, I wish it was. I wish it was. I said, you shouldn't wish it was. I said, just, you know, just enjoy your day that you're in now and it'll be here before you know it. But we all did when we were young. Oh, That's yeah, the absolutely. Yeah, That's absolutely. The I mean, yeah. but it, it, it does go by so fast, doesn't it? You know, but it, equally, though, I'm really, I was, I was genuine, I said to you yesterday, I'm genuinely feeling excited about the next few months. Mm. And that's a nice feeling because, you know, there's been times where you're certainly running into Christmas. And I think it all stems from, it stems from last Christmas and the sort of approach that we took, mm. didn't we? It's about the people. It is. Yeah. Absolutely. It's about the people. Um, <laughs> but yes, so much is in store. But b before any of that, we need to talk about the fact that for the first time in a long time, yes, I'm wearing a shirt yeah. that's tucked in. Right. Look. It is Look. tucked in. I'm tucked in. It is tucked in. And yeah. I haven't been able to wear tucked no. in shirts no. since I had the big operation and the big scar. And the reason for that is because the scar runs literally right down over my yeah, belt line. It does. It was so uncomfortable wearing tucked in things. Mm, so Because everything was rubbing, wasn't it? Yeah, really, really bad. Mm. And then, as you found out last episode, it was my birthday quite recently, and my brother, who hasn't sent me a present in about seven years... <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying that as a criticism. No, no. Because that's just charming. <laughs> what it does is, but no, what it does is it adds weight and excitement to yeah. what I'm now going when to tell you. When you got one, we were like, "Oh my word! I can't believe it!" So then one arrived, and I was like, I nearly fell off my chair. And then I opened it up, and and just bear with me. It here. was meant as a joke present. Yeah, well, the joke's on him, and yeah. I'll tell you for why. He bought me it, at Disneyland in Florida. He saw a pair of Darth Vader boxer shorts. And it's the stretchy, stretchy sort of lycra ones. Yeah, it's the type of ones which you... It's the type of stuff I wear when I go running. Mm. I don't wear Darth Vader boxer shorts when I go running. <laughs> don't you worry about that. But he, he'd clearly seen these and he thought, oh, this would be a laugh. He probably... I mean, he maybe even thought maybe he'll never wear them, but he'll get a laugh out of it. Well, I did get a laugh out of it, but immediately mm. I thought... Actually, these look great. These look good, and I'd never thought that before. No, we'd never even considered it. No, I think the thing that made them great was the fact that they were seamless. And, and this, this is the point. You know, they were completely seamless. So I looked at them, and 
I don't know why I thought straight away, hold on a minute, these could be really good. Yeah. So I, I wore them that night and oh my goodness, were Honestly, they good. you didn't stop talking about it. It was like, I'm because so comfortable. Every pair, every pair of, of underwear that I've worn, because of the elastic which inevitably is in it, it just rubs yeah. and it rubs and it rubs and it's just awful. And suddenly, having this seems now the one worry that I always have with this stretchy material is sometimes it loses its shape. Yeah, yeah. Well, well they haven't these, so far, have they? If they're going to lose their shape, normally it, it, they lose it in the course of wearing. Yeah, yeah. And at no point have no, they done that. Been really good. So I'm like, oh my goodness, okay, th this is amazing. And Kay said, well, why don't we look for something similar that we can get you more of? Yeah. So you did, you found I did. a thing. I found um, a UK shop, it's called Runderwear. Immediately discard the run bit, because yes, this is designed... For runners. And I know I'm a runner, yeah. but there's no way I'm going to wear these for runners. That's not why we wanted to buy them, but they are designed, as Dan says, for runners. And they, they do socks, they do um, ladies running underwear and men's running underwear, and they also do some sort of proper running stuff as yeah. well. And I, I saw these and I thought, gosh, they look great. And they were completely seamless. But I thought, right, okay, I'll buy a pair. Yeah. And just try them. I got them on. You didn't need to know that. And just try them and see what they're like. And they came and you tried them and you're like, ah. Oh. <laughs> because. So I went back and bought a load more. What, what has transformed, I mean, it's, it's transformative. Mm. Because if you imagine, you know, we've all got our, our axes, we've all got our crosses to bear in life. But, you know, if you imagine that you've had this constant mm. niggling pain the whole time, even, you know, when I had stuff outside, even when I was wearing shirts not tucked in. They were still, yeah. Underwear was, was still rubbing and making it awful. Suddenly, that's all gone. Mm. And today I thought, why don't I try? But the one thing which is really odd for me is I've always been a tucked in man. You have. Well, those it's days... a lot of information <laughs> for you, isn't it? Those days are gone. Right. Because that would certainly negate the, the mm. what what mm. it's doing. Mm. So I couldn't recommend if ever look, it it's utterly transformed my whole Yeah, and I think the I think the point we're trying to make is that, you know, he's been uncomfortable. It's been unco you've been uncomfortable for yeah. what has it been? Two years. Well um, yeah, Well it could be two years this coming February yeah. that he had the surgery and you've literally been uncomfortable every single day. Yeah. And I know a lot of people out there will will deal with things like this. And it, it's so, just it's awful, isn't it? It's awful. And to know This is something which find you find something that yes. helps. If you you know, if any of this is ringing true for you and you're thinking you know, consider yeah. seamless Underwear. Yeah, yeah, because there must be lots of you out there that have maybe had surgery, you know, around this area. And we know, because I've had messages from yeah, people. Yeah, and I think, you know, to find something that, especially for ladies, and, you know, I don't obviously know what the ladies' items are like, but going by what the men's are like, you would think that they're similar. And the well, reviews were all at the very just least, as good. If they are seamless, yeah, it, it makes sense, doesn't it, yeah. that they're obviously not going to have a seam that's then going to rub. No. I cannot begin to tell you. They're so great that my mum asked me what she should get for my <laughs> eldest brother for his not birthday. Not the brother who sent no, these, the, for, the other For his brother. birthday. I said, buy him some pants. <laughs> <laughs> so she did. <laughs> but what I said to her was, in fact, you said this as well, is make sure that she puts a note on it yeah. saying why. Because otherwise why? I'll open them and go... Yeah, I'll go what? What has she bought me pants for? I it's, it's been a big thing, Huge. you know, that's happened Huge. for us. And I know it might seem like, you know, quite an insignificant thing, but for you not to be uncomfortable, it's it's a massive thing. You yes, know, so. absolutely. Yeah. And, and th th there's another big thing going on right at this moment. And in fact, it's been going on for months and months and months. Mm. Neil, we have always aspired to create a home for Francisco. Because that's who's down there looking at you. He's looking at you every episode. And we've always wanted a home for Francisco. And, you know, we've looked at so many different ways of trying to make that happen. But nobody got it. Because I think we're quite an interesting market, aren't mm. we? Us, us knitters. And I think it's quite a unique It is unique. Community. You need to be within it 
to understand, to understand it. it. Yeah. So, and also as well, we didn't want to do something that wasn't lovely. And to to create something lovely, I think you need the control. Mm. So what's happened is over months and months and months of time, I've been learning how to create a website. And on the 1st of December, in fact, it, it could be like our... I didn't know that. Christmas present. The 1st of December. The, the Christmas present for everyone at the start of Advent... Our website is going to launch. So www.bakerybears.com will go live. There is a holding page there right now. So if you go onto the site, you know, you'll see bakerybears.com coming soon. And what we've created is we've created a home for everything. So there'll be a special area for new adventures, special area for pudding club, special area for patterns, special area for tutorials. It's a site which everyone can use. But specifically, it's going to transform the lives of patrons. <laughs> and the, re- the, the reason being is there's so much under-the-hood excitement. <laughs> oh, that sounds wrong. <laughs> there's so much under-the-hood excitement, which basically it, it's going to enable you to access all the things that we produce yeah. in a completely seamless and an exciting way. Well. And it's so pretty. You know, <laughs> I know that's... I know that might not be important to a lot of people, and but it is really pretty to look at, and I just really wanted to get, I you know Dan's been asking my opinion on things like the colours and the layout and the font and the you know all those kinds of things. And I've also um, I've been talking really for months to our platinum patrons, just yeah, getting little yeah, bits of, of information yeah. with regards to the types of things. What we wanted to do is we wanted to make sure that all the things which you guys would like from a site we would be able to deliver mm. plus though all the things which we really want to mm. deliver for you which you b- would perhaps never think of we wanted to do as well and it's very simple as well we wanted it to be very user friendly just what Isn't what it? we wanted to create was we wanted to create a lovely space where it felt like yeah you were coming round to our house yeah yeah <laughs> so the first of december it goes live so exciting. and there will be there'll be totally brand new exclusive content on there which everyone will be able to access which you'll never have seen before plus you know like i said it's going to transform the lives of of our patrons and enable you to get access to all the things which you already do access but in a brand new and extremely mm-hmm. cool way mm-hmm. plus there's a way of saving it onto oh, your yeah, device, yeah. so onto your iPhone. Oh, so if you've got a favourite thing that we really do, cute. you can save this little thing and then there's this little app thing appears. Yeah, yeah. And then whenever you want to get access to, you know, your specific yeah. favourites that we it's do, really you just cute. hit that and bang, you're there. And it's been it's brilliant. I think the best thing about this is that because we've been in control of it, mm. It's been very easy to, you know, to go back and you'll you'll ask me something and then you'll say, all right, I can I can change that, I can change that. But we've always been about the hands-on approach. We're doing it ourselves. Yeah. It's completely homemade, done by us, and yeah, it feels right to be doing it this way, doesn't it? So even though it's taken a lot longer, yeah, we feel like this has been the right thing to do. Well, it was. I mean, we, we did look at. At getting it we done did, by, by people, but no one got it. Just no one understood. No, we, they couldn't because what we were trying no, to achieve. No, like because, like we say, unless you're part of that that world, I think it's a difficult thing to sort of get your head around, isn't it? But look, enough chat, because I think it's time that we should find out. Kay Jones, what's on your needles? Yay! Now we need dramatic music for this. Do we? Yeah, because the last time you showed it, you were... I was, I was worried. ...making sweeping statements about, it will take as long as it takes. Yes. I'm not really enjoying this. Yes, I said all those things. But and then what happened, Kate? Well, this is Dan's vest. This is the cricket vest. It's the Hutton by Pat Mancini, who you've been chatting with. I have, but say nothing more at this, oh, okay. at this moment. OK. But all I will tell you is she's a lovely lady. Mm. So it's the cricket vest... And I hadn't got very far, if you remember, and I was humming and ahhing, and I thought it's looking too big, and I don't know if I was enjoying it, and blah, blah, blah. Well, I picked it, I left it for probably a week and a half, and then I thought, oh, I'm going to pick it up, and I'm going to work a bit on it. And do you know what? I said to Dan after about an hour, I thought, I'm not going to jinx this by saying anything straight away. So I thought, right, no, I'll just carry on a bit, carry on a bit. And then I said to him, do you know what? I'm quite enjoying this. Da, da, da. And I think the thing that sort of changed my opinion of it 
It, do you know how last time I was saying there was no rest rows? You know, it was based on the rib. So you're always, even on the, the back side, you're always knitting and purling. And I thought, well, that's going to annoy me that I've not got any rest rows. But actually, it's kind of keeping my attention. And I've been working on um, quite a lot of designs at the minute. And one of them in particular just had that same feeling for me. It really kept my interest because there was just something to do on each row. And this is kind of the same. So I sat down and I, I mean, you know, I worked on it for, a little, I don't know how long, it didn't seem that long. And I knit from where the little marker is. I don't know if you can see it actually. There's a marker down there. All the way up to here. And whilst that probably doesn't look like very much, it's, it's about two, three inches maybe. It might be three inches. Between two and three inches I've done. It really didn't take me that long. And I was enjoying it. So I'm thinking, well, gosh, you know, this, this might be okay. So, I mean, this is how far I am now. And the other thing I was bothered about is that it was looking massive. Now, I still think it is going to be on the loose side. But the, the, the stitch pattern is definitely pulling the fabric in. And you can see that just by, if I show you the front, you see you get these knit stitches here. And there's obviously the cables going on here. If you look at it on the reverse side, you can't even actually see what would be a purl stitch here because it's been sucked in. If I kind of pull it apart, you can see there's a purl stitch in here, but it's sucking it in. And then also this section here is the cables and this is four stitches. But when you look at it from the back, it actually looks more like two stitches, you know, the amount of fabric that there is. So it's definitely pulling it in. You know, it is, it's definitely, it is going to be a looser garment. I know that for sure. But Dan's said, you said, it's fine. I'm not bothered if it's a bit loose. And it is, it well, is intended to be a loose fitting yeah, garment. And, I mean, I'm thinking back to my, my brothers used to play cricket for York under 19s. And I right. remember their cricket jumpers and they were more on the loose on side. the sloppy side. Right. I think they're designed to go over Some, lots yeah, of yeah, gear. Yeah. 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 So it gives you a bit of room. Yeah, because obviously you 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 know you're working as well, aren't you? Yeah. Bowling or you're catching yeah. or you're running or yeah. whatever you, else you're doing. So, and I checked my gauge as well. Once I got knitting on the pattern section, I checked my gauge and it's spot on to the pattern. The actual stitch gauge. I didn't check the row gauge because you can always fiddle with the number of rows, can't you, to get the right amount of length or whatever. But the stitch gauge is the one that's really important because that's what gives you this, you know, the width of it. And it was it was spot on to the pattern. So, you know, I'm happy that it's not going to come out any bigger than the pattern tells me. So there'll be about, all, all together, all the way around, there'll be about five inches of positive ease. You know, that's front and back. So two inches or so ease each side. You know, I'm going with it and I've had to just... Because the, op the options I had would be to either just rip it out and not knit it, which didn't feel like an option. Because the colours are perfect, I've the got cables the, are lovely. You know, I've got the yarn and I, love, I really like the yarn and Dan really wants it and I didn't want to just abandon it. Or I could have ripped it out and done the size small, but that just seemed ridiculous. No. You know, that says it's to fit a chest 36 to 38. Dan's chest is almost 44, so I just thought, I was worried about the fit across kind of the shoulders and things if I was to knit the size small. I think that would have just been wrong. It felt, it didn't feel right. So I'm going with the size medium and I'm going with the fact that it's just going to be a slightly looser fit. You go, girl. And it just means, you you know, you wear a shirt underneath it. Well, which not. you would do anyway. just be a bit sloppy. Well, you would always wear a t-shirt or a shirt underneath it, wouldn't yeah. you? You're not going to go just with that. No. It'd be a bit bizarre, wouldn't it? You know, the colours are great. I really love the colours. You know, the Cleveland brown colours, as we said, we've used. And it's brilliant. And the yarn, I'm really, really enjoying the yarn. I'm using King Cole Merino Blend DK. It's a superwash yarn, but it's not particularly, It's it, you know, it's perfectly soft, but it does have a nice woolly feel to it as well. And I really like that. It feels like I'm knitting with a proper wool. And I do like that for garments, that it feels like it's something that's going to last for, you know, a good amount of time. It's going to be around. So the main colour I'm using is shade 
Aran, that's the colour, not the thickness, it's a DK weight yarn. So the cream is Aran, the brown is chocolate, and the orange is cinnamon. So a lovely autumnal feel as well, so I mean it's been really nice feeling sort of project. And you know, again, the needles I'm loving. I'm, I'm crazy about these high highs, I've got to say, and I'm gonna be doing a little review on them actually because I think it's worthy of a review and I, I just really love them and it's making the knitting of it an absolute pleasure, you know. I'm looking forward to working on it because I get to knit with these needles. Sorry, I just got oh. slightly giddy with excitement because I was just thinking, on the 1st of December, there'll be a special place for all your reviews. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Rather than them out there somewhere. We're very excited about... Pages trying to find them. Yeah, I mean, we're very excited about the website. It's been a long time coming, you know. So we are really excited yeah. about it. Aren't You're going to do we? something though. Do it right. Yeah. Well, we're just. We're, I'm. I'm really proud of what you. What you're doing. And I said this to to Dan we're several doing. times. I couldn't. Yeah, but Dan's been. You know, Dan's the one that's building it. I've just been there to say I don't like that colour or move that there or you know Look, can we have that particular font or whatever. What happened was um, when when you know when I discovered that I liked editing, I realised that secretly I was a bit of a nerd. Well, you um, quite enjoyed the process, haven't you? Yes. Once you learn how to do it, initially you look at it and you think, how could I do that? Yeah. But then once you sort of delve into it a bit and you start to, you know, try and understand yeah. a little yeah. bit more and just take it one step at a time, you realise, hold on a minute, I can do this. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, yes, sometimes you might make a mistake and it might go a bit wrong, but, but you just fine. fix it. Yeah, that's fine because, because you, you, learn know, from you, it. you learn from it yeah. and you can fix it. Too and right. I, I'm, I've, I've said to you a few times, gosh, you know, it looks really, it looks really amazing. For all of us. Yeah. And For it, all of you. So it feels really special to be doing. So yeah, that's my Hutton. And like I said, the needles I'm loving, it's my higher, higher bamboo interchangeables. They've been an absolute joy. I've used, I mean, this... I've used two sizes for this, 3.25 and 3.75 millimetres are the sizes I'm using for this. I'm using the 4.5 millimetre for another quite large something, which I've been knitting on for a while and I've knit a lot of fabric and I've enjoyed every single stitch. I love them. I really, really love them. I'm so glad that I've decided to buy these ones. Cool. They're brilliant. I love wooden needles. There's something about wooden needles that you know oh it just it just feels like you're a bit more connected to mm. to what you're doing i don't know why that would be but you know they're warm and wood is like a comforting thing isn't it i think well it's a living thing it's a living thing yeah, yeah. whereas metal is obviously a man-made man -made thing. thing that's probably what it is it feels a bit more natural and i know there's metal within it and everything but the needles themselves you know that's touching your yarn and it's just lovely so I've just started my second ball. Well, I say just actually, it was down here. I'm just gonna carry on working on it when I feel like picking it up. I'm gonna pick it up and hopefully every time I pick it up, I'll get three inches maybe done. And before we know it, we'll have the back done and then I'll be on the front and it'll be finished. So Dan Jones, yeah. what's on your very bright looking needles? Look at those. My goodness. Look at those, look at this, I'm being, it's hardly two at, a, two at a time, I don't think so. I couldn't do that. I couldn't do two at a time. Oh, no. I'm not into that. Good I'm, for you, you know, the people who, who I've, are. I've never tried it. It's not something I've ever wanted to try, to no, be honest. No, no. It's a Jemima sock. Oh. oh, yes. But look at the yarn. How could I not knit this yarn? This yarn's absolutely amazing. It's shall insane. I, shall I get the ball? Oops. Can you guess? Oh, oh, oh. Can you guess who created this yarn? You'll know, won't you? Can yes. You know? You are correct, it's Nicole C. Mendes. It's so blowing out. It's the same base. There you go. As the last, I've knit two pairs of socks, haven't I, on yeah. Nicole C. Mendes base, haven't I? Or is it just one? No, was it's it just, one. just one. I've knit a pair. Right. You've knit a pair. Right, cool. I think this is the third pair we've got with them. Well, I just, it's the type of yarn that you just feel like you've always knit with it. Oh, it's lovely. It's Nicole Soft Sock Base, 80, 20, 400 meters. And this is disco, because really, <laughs> it totally is, isn't it? And Nicole told me actually, she sent me a message and she said that this actually glows under black light. So I looked at what black light is and I think it's actually UV. 
So it needs to be under UV and they will glow. So we need to go to like a disco or something, don't yes, we? Yes, absolutely. And get our socks out yes. on the dance floor and we'll yes. be glowing. Yes. We'll be like raving with our socks. Well, I need to finish them and then you can wear them and then they'll glow when you're wearing them in the disco. Right. So that's, yeah. I haven't been in a disco since I was probably about 21. So <laughs> the chances we of We went that to a disco the night we met. Oh, we did. And you weren't 21. I wasn't 21. <laughs> I was possibly... 31? Yes. I was 31. Yes, 10 oh, years no. too late. I know. <laughs> Disco, listen to us. Nightclub. Disco Inferno. Nightclub it was. We I were... think that was the first time I'd ever been in a nightclub. I think we were actually sat on the floor dancing. We were doing some strange dance where you sit on the floor. Yeah, and go backwards and forwards yeah, and side to side. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. That's so embarrassing. Isn't yeah, it? I well, know. I'm loving this. It's really fun. Yes. It really, really is fun. You know, the, the yarn the and everything. Are and gorgeous. Also, the socks. I really enjoy knitting the socks because every row is different. Look at that. It's all different. I cannot believe I've let you use this yarn. He cast it on and showed me the ribbon. I was like, I was really mad because I was like, oh, I wanted to knit with that. I've been saving it. But and that's how much I must love you. I know. I'll let you knit with that. I know. And, and it's particularly opportune that I'm showing this today. My first Miss Potter song. Yeah. But also... Well, I'll t yes. I was, I was just, just going to show you my Jemima socks, actually, because you were knitting them. These are the Jemima socks. This was the first pattern in my Miss Potter Sock Club. And the second pattern... It's is out today! Out now. Actually, I snuck it out a day early. Oh! So did you spot it? Did you? Well, you will have, because you will have got a message in your Ravelry inbox. So yeah, I snuck it out a day early. So that is now out, the second pattern, and the second pattern is called Peter. And you'll show your pair later. I'm going to show them in what's off. Excellent. That's so exciting. Yes. So I'm off. I'm knitting my Jemima socks, loving every minute, but I want to know, Kay Jones, what else oh. is on your needles? Well, is a hat. And doesn't it suit the bag? It does suit the bag. I didn't even do that deliberately. Oh. But I've, I'll be honest, I have been thinking mm. with regards to this sock about making sure that I cast on in the right bit in the repeat so oh, that they match. Right. <laughs> and what I wanted to do was when I cast this on, I wanted to make sure that I left a long <laughs> enough tail for weaving in. For weaving in. I don't know what I'm weaving into, <laughs> but of course. Yeah, I it, think. I didn't even use the long tail cast on. Imagine if I'd used the long tail cast on, how long this tail would have been. You didn't use the long tail cast on, you did. I didn't. What did you use? I used the the twisty one. That's a long tail one, isn't it? Oh, it's, uh, it, it, does long tail form a family of cast ons? Well, long, a long, long tail just means that you have a long tail when you cast on. Okay. I mean, the main one is just the long tail cast on. German isn't twisted. It? But the German it's... twisted is a long tail cast on, isn't it? Yes, a particularly long tail. Well, very long, isn't it? I like my tails long. Oh yes. Can you remember? I don't know if you will, but I don't. I received a skein of yarn from lovely John Arbon. John oh, Arbon. Oh, as Dan likes to call him, John Arbon. Yes, I just did. Everyone heard. <laughs> I don't know why he does that. John Arbon, if you're watching. I'm really sorry that he makes fun of your name. I'm not making fun of anything. <laughs> it just it makes it rhyme with John. Oh, bon. Oh, bon. There you go. Um, and he was, he was on, on the, the telly, telly with, Jules. with Jules. I watched that fella right. on Escape to the Country. I'm going to watch it. It was on BBC yesterday. There's a program called Escape to the Country. The presenter's called Jules. It's a man. It must presumably be short for Julian. And he was there. He was. He visited John Arbon's mill. If ever there was a man who you would expect to see riding out at the front of a hunt. It's him, it's Jules. Jules. He's, very, he's very country, isn't he? Very quite posh Nice country. red, yeah. you know, black hat, yeah. big horse, yeah. jumping over hedges. So I'm going to watch it on iPlayer this afternoon. I'm, if I, I must remember to watch it, because I really like that program. Um, so yeah, I got sent this skein of yarn from the lovely people at John Arbon, and it's their Harvest Hues. They've had Harvest Hues for a while, but they'd revamped the colours, added more colours and come out with a new range for sort of the beginning of all with. And I got the bramble colour which is this beautiful, oh it's like a purpley black curranty sort of colour, it's gorgeous. I hope you're going to knit with it. I am knitting with oh, it. Okay. And I've tried, well the issue I was having it, I just couldn't land on a project that felt right for the yarn. I tried a couple of things, I cast on a 
a cowl, didn't I? And before that, I think I'd cast on a shawl and I just, nothing felt quite right. And then all of a sudden I thought, do you know what? I'm gonna need a hat with this. I really want a hat with it. Because it's, I mean, it's beautiful yarn. It's a mix of Falklands Merino and that sheep breed. I'm not gonna try and say it because I don't think I can say it correctly. It's 6535. It's a four ply, fingering weight, and you get 400 meters per 100 grams. And I'm pretty sure it was like 11 pounds for this. It's really good. I think that's excellent value. It's a two plied yarn, I think. I think there's two, two plies. It's either two or three. I finally settled on a hat and I wanted, once I started knitting it, I thought, you know what, I want to maybe combine this a little bit with something just to give it a pop of, of colour. And I thought, right, okay, I've got quite a, I say rustic in the it loosest. It looks rustic. Yeah, in the loosest but sense. That's nice. Because it really isn't. There's a tiny, tiny prickle, but really it's lovely. And it's quite silky looking. That must be the Zvot Bless. I just thought it'd be lovely to maybe combine it with a hand-dyed merino type yarn um, and just get that sort of mix of a more rustic with a hand-dyed. So I remembered in my stash I've kept this mini because I just loved it so much and I didn't want to use it. I'm sure it's, I think, I'm pretty sure it's a Hedro Yarns mini and it came in like a set of minis. But it's just lovely, it didn't have a name. It's just one of these really delicately speckled yarns and there's bright pink, bright orange, tiny bit of blue, tiny bit of purple, yellow. It's just all these really pretty bright colors, neon. I thought that would look great as a contrast, you know, it's just fun. So I just, I knit a bit of rib and then I thought, right, I'm just gonna start doing something. And I just kind of made up a little stripe sequence with the sort of poppy colour. I like ever decreasing circles. And I really like it. I think it's really, it's really sweet. And I'm gonna now finish it off just in the purple. So I'll knit all the rest in the purple, but then I'm gonna make a, either a little pom-pom or a tassel with the rest of this colour. So you'd need, you know, a 20 gram mini, and then I think it's only gonna take probably half a ball of this, so you could get two hats out of it, which I think is great. And I really like it. So I cast on less stitches than a sock head hat, because I find, I've knit a few sock head hats, and I find them just to be a little bit too slouchy on my head, they're just a bit too big. So I cast on less, a few less stitches than a sock head, I knit just about two inches of ribbon, I think. Because although I like the look of the kind of four inches on a sock head hat, I just kind of lose energy and I think a lot of people do. So I got to two inches and I thought, you know what? I'm gonna call that done on the ribbon front. <laughs> Bad enough of ribbon. I want to knit some of that cute mini. So that's what I did. So I've done two inches of ribbon, gone into this sort of stripe sequence. And now I'm just gonna work up. I'm gonna give it a bit of slouch, but not, not a, a huge amount, do some nice decreases and then pop on a tassel or a pom-pom, whichever I fancy at the time when I get there. And I think what I'm gonna do is I will write up this pattern and I'm gonna pop it out as a free pattern. Woohoo! Don't know when that will be, just whenever I've finished it and whenever I get the time just to then write it up and pop that out as a free pattern. I haven't got a name for it, or I haven't thought about a name for it yet. So this is lovely and it's knitting up so nice, this yarn, I'm really enjoying it. One thing I want to say about, I saw someone knitting some socks out of this yarn and that does kind of puzzle me a little bit because it's lovely and you can knit, to be fair, you can knit socks out of whatever you want. I would never tell somebody that they couldn't knit socks out of a particular yarn because at the end of the day, it's up to you. If you want to knit socks out of that beautiful 100% cashmere yarn, then you knit socks, I say. But it, it, this isn't the, I, I, I wouldn't say that this is designed specifically to knit socks because it's not a particularly strong yarn is all I, will, all I would say. And obviously socks need to be hard wearing. And yeah, yeah, if you want your socks to be hard wearing, generally you want a fairly strong yarn. And I think just a good simple way of telling whether a yarn is gonna be suitable for knitting socks in terms of strength, is if you just take a bit of the yarn and pull it apart, 
Did you see how easy that pulled apart? That's kind of telling me that it's not an overly strong yarn and... You absolute I... pro. Why? She's a pro. Do you know what? She is a pro. Well, that sounds wrong. No, you're just, you're brilliant. I... You know, in the old days, when you stopped for a cough, you would have started where you'd finished. Right. Yeah, and now she stops for a cough, which of course <laughs> you never heard. Because it, it's, it's gone, it's been edited. Do you know what? She started the whole sentence again. Please continue. Right, okay, thank you. So yeah, all I would say is if, if you're ever wondering whether you can use a particular yarn for socks, just take a little length of it and just... If it pulls apart, if, I probably wouldn't. Well, no, if it pulls apart quite easily like that, you know, there's a lot of yarns where if you put a bit of strength on, you know, you can pull them apart, but just judge it by how easily you can pull those apart. And, I, you know, I'm not stopping you from knitting socks in this yarn. If you want to knit socks in it, go ahead and knit socks in it, I But don't say. expect them to last a long time. But yeah, don't expect them to last, you know, like an opal yarn, for example. This is Mad Tosh, which I'll talk about later, but this is Tosh, Mad Tosh Sock Light, and I haven't tried to do this, but let's just try and pull this one apart. Oh gosh. It's not going to happen. Don't do it, don't no, do it. <laughs> it's not going to go. That one is cutting into my fingers. So that's the difference. You know, that one's specifically designed for socks. It's got nylon in it. This one hasn't. And here on how it's just a quick, easy way of finding out whether you've got a yarn in your stash and you might want to knit socks with it. Just yeah, don't, go, don't go into your local yarn shop. No. Stop pulling the yarn. Don't do it at Rhinebeck or anything. Just saying, oh, Kay, Kay Jones on that yeah. Bakery Bear podcast. She told see. me, just pull that yarn. No, I just no. want to see if this yarn's going to be all right for socks. Don't do that. I'm talking about yarn that's in your own stash. Okay, don't be pulling anyone else's yarn apart. Right. Woohoo. Look. Oh. It's a second sleeve. It's a second sleeve. Would you like to see the first one? Yes, please. Okay, then. I'll get it for you. Look, I've got... This lovely bag, and it even has my name on it. <laughs> and that was sent to us by Knitting Den, I wasn't it? I was. Didn't yes. Denise made that for you? Woohoo! Yeah. And in here, there is the top of my jumper, but there's also the sleeve of my jumper. It's not your jumper. Your jumper. Thank you very much. Look at the sleeve! Yay! There it is! Look at that. Woohoo! Sleeve. It's a beautiful colour. I'm it loving is. that colour. It's very now, it's very yes. in. Yes, it's very current. But forget current I think sometimes current doesn't matter I didn't choose to knit with this because it was current no I chose to knit with this because it's a lovely color and I wanted to I chose it for yeah okay <laughs> he didn't choose anything and I chose it look I'm becoming more tiny bits of information knowledgeable about I did art. I was thinking of you when I chose it because I thought you know, I'll, you were knitting it and I didn't want to give you a bright pink girly colour. Right? I would knit with bright pink. You would knit with it. I, I also would, wear bright pink. Yeah, there is some pink in that. So, this is it. Yeah, and look, I mean, it's momentous because first time round, if you remember, I was having to come up with a way of filling the gaps which the increases created, stopping you from being able to knit the flowers. And... I do keep forgetting about the technique which I developed to put the flowers in, mm -hmm. which resulted in you having to show me how to, last night, tink back a SSK. Mm. But you taught me how to tink back an SSK. On the next round, I made exactly the same mistake again, and then I tinked back my own SSK. Oh, did you really? Woohoo! Oh, what was that? What was that? It's a DPN. No, it can't be. You've got oh, five no. there. What did you drop? Oh, no. Oh, no. What Denise. Oh, no, it can't be. Is it? Is that what it is? Oh, no, the tree of life's fallen off. Ooh. Oh, that's we'll a fix bad it. omen. We'll fix it. We'll fix it. I'll we'll fix, fix it. it. I'll fix it. Uh, all it needs, look, oh, it's just the end. I've got some tools up Just there. needs a twist and it'll be fixed. I've got something. That Panic over. So, yes, it's the Sawyer pattern. The yarn is Drops Charisma, isn't it? Yes. Excellent. Oh, look I at me I think that's go. mustard or light mustard. Yes, absolutely. And yes, I am well into I'm, I'm well into it, to be honest. I really am. I fixed it. I fixed it, which is just superb because first time round, if you remember, it took me three goes to work out what I was doing, you know, to be able to knit through it and it not look how I want it to look, you know? And what I love about knitting is 
you can look at something and you can go, when you get to a certain stage in your abilities, and you know, I'm just lucky that I've got Kay with me as well, who, who can really help me with the technical stuff. But you know, what's so great about any art form? Because it's the same, it, it is the same with anything, isn't it? When you have the skills to do it yourself, mm. you can make adjustments to make it better fit the vision that you have of the of the finished product but then also as well what i love and i think i spoke about this before is i love the fact that you know when you consider when you knit a sock you make adjustments so it fits your foot right what i'm excited about over the coming years is knitting lots of garments and making the adjustments so that you know it fits k perfectly and that's fun i think that's fun isn't it because if you think about it when you first start knitting socks the challenge is getting through the sock. Yeah, you're not really thinking about the fit of it yeah. at all. You're you just, can't think, what heel shall just, I put in there? No, you just want to get the construction right. And yeah. yeah, and that's the stage, obviously, that I'm at with the construction of, of garments. But it's nice to be at a point, you know, with this garment. And you could only really do it. This is obviously it's my third one. Start with the Irish coffee. Samantha, as you saw last time, now the Solia. Um, and, you know, third time through, and you can look at things and go, no, 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 actually, could we do that a little bit better? Well, mm -hmm. yes, we can. And you make it then original too, don't you? Which I think is really nice. Well, you're custom fitting yeah. it, aren't you? you but know? not only that, you know, I think it's nice when, you know, you take a pattern. That might be the way of taking, you know, one of the really popular patterns. And I do, I would really like to knit a, a Jen stain gas mm. pattern. Yeah. I just got slightly put off by it because literally everyone was, was knitting it. Yeah, and it wasn't just that. It was the fact that it's... A bit simple. It's, yeah, it's effectively, you know, you've only got that yoke where you're doing something and then it's just plain stocking stitch and I think you would get bored. But what if we put something into the body? Well, we could, but then, you know, that'll take some time to... Not if it's just a simple... Work out something. But if it's just a simple stitch... Yeah, pack. but you've got to think, if there's decreases, you've got to think about that. Obviously, yeah. what are you going to do with the sleeves? Because there's decreases in the sleeve. Yeah. You've just got to think about all that, really, yeah. and fitting it. So, yeah. That's the soul, yeah? Loving every second of it. And as you know, you can follow every step of my journey in Journey to the Centre of the Earth. I can't wait till you get onto the yoke because there's lovely colours in it. There's a pale pink, there's yes. a medium pink, there's like a burgundy. Really pretty for the flowers at the top. It's well, lovely. we're not far off that at all. No. Weeks. Within two weeks... You'll have finished the sleeve. I'll have finished the sleeve and I'll be... Ready to join, oh my word. Well, yeah, we'll My only experience of ever doing that, bottom up and then joining sleeves, was horrific. So... <laughs> I'm hoping that this won't be like that. No. Well, we'll see. Because it's obviously a different pattern. What else is on your needles? The last thing I've got today on my needles is in my lovely Christmassy bag. Oh, I dug out my, dug out my Christmas bag. I made these bags a good few years ago now. I found this fabric and just loved it. It's like a heavier weight, sort of like a, it's a heavier weight cotton, but it's got a slightly linen-y feel. And I kept one for myself. I just love, I love this bag. I bring it out every Christmas. And I'm knitting a pair of socks in here. And it dawned on me a few weeks ago that I, I must have seen something somewhere, but I thought, you know, I've never knit a tweedy pair of socks. So it seemed, I've been wanting to order some yarn from Knit Picks for a while. I've never placed a Knit Picks order. And now that they actually ship to the UK without you having to pay customs fees, they deal with it in some magical way and you don't actually have any customs fees to pay. I thought, do you know what, I'm going to order some and it was free shipping over a certain amount as well. So I ordered a bunch of their tweed yarn and it's the Knit Pick Stroll Tweed. And I've got a few colours. I'll show you the other two actually while I'm just talking about this project. The two that I'm working with for this pair of socks are Garn Garnet Heather and Dill Heather. Don't they look lovely together? I love this sort of vintage red and green. It's not your bright in your face red and green, is it? It's a very classic vintage sort of combination. And then I also got some persimmon heather and oyster heather, which are these two lovely colors. It's very soft. 
You know, it's, it is very soft. It's. I remember a, when I knit the lovely yeah, cat that, knit that, that Benjamin Crudwick yes. designed for us. The the the, the journey. It was the Knit Picks. Yeah. It was Aaron. Was it City Tweed Aaron or something like that? Wasn't it? Yeah. And it's you beautiful. really enjoyed it. Yeah. It's really lovely yarn to knit with. Yeah, but this is sixty five percent superwash merino, twenty five percent nylon, and then ten percent Donegal tweed, which are the little sort of neppy bits. It's very very soft and lovely i thought the colors were lovely so i've got two balls of each of all of those and i cast on some socks for dan and inspired by my feelings about just having a little bit of something to do on every row keeps things going a bit quicker i thought rather than casting on just a plain sock i'd just add a little bit of something into it so what I've done, uh, you can see I'm doing contrast cuffs, heels and toes. And I think what I'm going to do is do the other one the other way around so that I only actually need to use these two, you know, rather than having to break into another ball of the green. I think I'm just going to um, switch the colours around for the second one. So I've done the garnet heather for the cuff and then hold it close so you can see. Can you see I've done like two little lines of moss stitch, just two little fine stripes of moss stitch and these will run down either side of the leg and I just think that and you know the leg and then run sort of down the foot. If I sort of move it off here because it'll be like that down the side of the the legs and it's just a tiny little panel very very simple but it does mean that on every you know just on this the way that I'm knitting magic loop just on this side there's just a little something to think about at the beginning and the end and then you're just knitting plain on the back but it does it does keep me sort of going because you're not just you don't just go into that sort of zone where you're just knitting which can be nice and we all know that can be nice but I tend to feel more motivated if I've just got a little bit of something going on. I think that um. it depends on the type of knitter that you are. Oh, absolutely it does. So it can be nice yeah, for yeah, absolutely a particular does. type of knitter. But, you know, and, and also, you know, like you, you sometimes like that. Yeah. But I never, ever like that. No, you don't ever like that. And so there'll be lots of other people out there that don't like that. You'd enjoy knitting socks like these, I'm yeah. sure, because there's just that tiny bit of something to do. Uh, and I'm really enjoying them. I think it looks really nice and it's quite manly looking, isn't it? To I mean, it's very unisex. Obviously, it would be lovely for a lady as well. But it's nice to find something that you can put into a, a man's sock. And I'm actually really enjoying this yarn. It is very, very soft. It's lovely. The At first, the kind of tweedy neps were freaking me out a bit because I just wanted to pick them out. <laughs> I'm fighting myself not to do that. Sometimes, like you can see there, there's a tiny one. I don't know if you'll see, but look, I mean, that's literally... Tweedy neps. It's just literally on the surface. Tweedy neps. Yeah. That sounds like the name of a character from a famous five novel. Yeah, I suppose it does, yeah. <laughs> it's, it, it's a Scottish dude. <laughs> Tweedy neps. <laughs> he's like a gilly type. It, yeah, he does, yeah. He's, he always wears boots. Yeah. And he's carrying a fish. It's Tweedy neps. <laughs> Tweedy neps. But what I've been trying to do is when I come across one is just ignore that it's there and kind of knit it into the fabric. I mean, sometimes it's, you'll, you'll get a section where the tweed is kind of twisted into the yarn itself and it's kind of within it. You're still laughing about it, aren't you? No, I'm just having a moment. All right. But sometimes it's more like it's sort of floating on the surface. And it would be very easy just to pick it off. So I'm trying to ignore that and try and kind of knit it in so that it it's then in the fabric, if you know what I mean. And I, I think it's looking really nice. It's very, I mean, it looks sort of festive, but not overly festive, does it? You could just wear these anytime. And I think it's really nice. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is in the next knitability, I'm just I'm going to write a little piece about these socks, and I will just write in there what I did to produce them, so that all patrons. Can in your monthly musings bit. In my monthly musings. Right. In one of my little, because what I tend to do in knitability now is. You don't is tend I to do. You started, started it doing, last issue. Yeah, rather than writing a long sort of article. In the last knitability, I decided to do three, three short three, stories, three short little snippets on 
any sort of random thing that has come into my mind in the previous sort of six weeks. And when I was knitting this, I thought I'm definitely going to write a little piece about these socks and I'll just pop in what I've done to create that. I thought that would be nice. And I think one of your other short stories should be the first story featuring the knitting gilly Tweedy Nets. <laughs> Somebody's going to use that now and make millions. If he's not millions. catching fish, he's knitting <laughs> colour work hats. <laughs> so that's really nice. I'm really enjoying it. And I'm using two and a half mils chow goose, my usual mini twist, and 72 stitches for Dan. He finished woman. It's really nice, isn't it? It really is nice, actually. It really is nice. And they're for me, aren't they? Yeah. That's... It, it, um, I think I'll call them my little bit mossy They look socks. like walking socks, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. They look like, you know, re yeah. I mean, I love the weight of the yarn as well. It's, it's, it's and nice and plump. Feel. But, it's, this but, yarn's nice and plump. I really like that. It is plump, but it, it's creating a a really nice, even Yeah. Fabric. Yeah, it's quite silky looking, I think, as well. It is. It is. And, um, you know, I think those two colours go together. I think they're really nice. I really like those two. And you're doing cuffs, heels and toes in mm. those, aren't you? Yeah. 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 I do love that, though, down the side. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? It is. I mean, it's, it's really lovely. Mm. But, you know, it's like you say, if you picked different colours, if you picked more ladylike yeah. colours, then it would absolutely mm. work for it a lady. Would. Totally. So, that's it. Now... You all may be wondering. Oh, yes. What's going to happen now? Go and get yourselves a cup of tea, have a little break. If you want to pause for a moment, yeah. get yourself a cup of tea, yeah. come back and then hit yeah. play. That's absolutely fine. Because in 2015, we introduced you to something very special. It ran until 2016. It came back for a Christmas special in 2017. But we have a problem because the tournament is tied. We need to find out who the winner is. And there's only one way we can do that. Mm. It's by starting a brand new four episode series of Knit or Forfeit. It's 10 questions and every single one of them is about knitting. I've not even heard of that one. These are all genuinely real sheep, but we have three lifelines. I've got a feeling the Black Welsh Mountain looks a bit more horny. It's the winner gets to choose anything that the loser has to knit for them. She will! Oh, yeah, hey. oh my goodness. Ladies and gentlemen, I am absolutely Excited doesn't even cover it. We are back, baby, for a four episode series. Now, for those of you who've got no idea what's going on, I'll explain to you what Knit or Forfeit is. This is the quiz show for knitters. Oh yes, and this time it's a little bit different to last time because this time it's 10 questions and every single one of them is about knitting. 10 questions, three of which will be picture questions. Every answer is multiple choice, so you can play along at home. But we have three lifelines, and those lifelines are 50-50, where we take away two wrong answers and leave two correct answers. We have text a friend, where we can text anybody we like to ask them if they can help us with a question. And of course, that's a tricky one because we need to know that they're gonna be there. So you really have to think who you might text. We also have Ask the Audience, where we post a picture to Instagram and then the audience can chip in and tell us what they think. And finally as well, this isn't a lifeline, but if we wish to go for the answer without actually seeing the multiple choice, we get two points instead of one. So that's the rules, that's how it works. But in a change to last time, in a change to any series of Knit or Forfeit you may have seen before, there is a new way of getting points. This is a knitting quiz, is it not? And so we decided that this time, the person at the end of the round who is wearing the most knitted items will get extra points. And the first contestant who is wearing many, many knitted items and who is clearly going for the win is Kane. <laughs> Here she is. I'm so hot. Are you already? 
<laughs> are you already? So look, remember, you are quite permitted to remove, you know, any any one of these at any point. Look, I'm doing it for the win. Because what we're going to do is at the I've end of the round. I've got socks on as well. At the end of the round, that's the moment where we'll count the knitted garments okay. that you have on. Okay. So we won't do any counting now, no. so you're not going to let anybody I haven't added it know. up, actually. So new this time. As many knitted items as you can, at the end of the round we'll count up and then I'll then do my first round and we'll count up and whoever had the most on at the end of the round will get extra points. And of course we're doing, as I said at the start of the show, we're doing four episodes of this. So Kay gets ten questions today in episode 111. She'll do the end of her round in episode 113. Oh, the end of that's that, ominous. Well, at the end of that she'll have her total. I'll do mine in 112 and 114, and whoever gets the highest out of all those rounds, yeah. two rounds each, yeah. is the winner. But no quiz show worth its salt does not give the audience at home the opportunity to win. True. And here at Knit or Forfeit, for those of you who've seen this before, you may remember that we like to signify the start and the end of the show with a very special sound, but this time, we're going to do something a little bit different. We will still have special sounds at the start and the end of the quiz, but they will be from movies, popular movies, blockbuster movies yeah. from the 1970s and the 1980s. And if you would like to win a skein of Bakery Bears hand dyed yarn, dyed especially yes. for knit or forfeit, yeah. all you have to do is listen to the sounds, identify the movie, yeah. And head over to the very special Knit or Forfeit page that we've set up on our Patreon page. It's also linked below in the show notes. And all you need to do is tell, tell us, us what you think the movie is. You have until the 6th of November to do this. For just the first round, remember, there's four episodes. So there's so four skeins of yarn up for grabs, <laughs> one for each episode. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it will close at 9 a.m. Greenwich Mean Time it'll be then. Yes. On the 6th of November. So that's your chance to win this first gain of yarn. And then we will do a random number to select the winner. Yeah. Cool. And we'll tell you who's won in the next episode yes. of Knit or Wolfit. Yes. Wonderful. So have I covered everything? Oh! I hope so, because I'm roasting. What is the oh, prize yes, yes. in Knit or Forfeit? It's great with mittens. You can clap. Yeah. You don't hear anything. <laughs> now, the prize in Knit or Forfeit it's very simple, yeah. very easy. The winner gets to choose anything that the loser has to knit for them. Did you get that? So if I win, I have to say to Dan, I want you to knit me X. And he has to do that. And when I win, I will tell Kay the jumper, the, the fingering weight fair isle oh, jumper. Oh, please. <laughs> Seriously, I've got to win because he will do that. You know he will do that. I've got my eye on a few choicest patterns. And we, we shall talk more about that in, uh, in forthcoming episodes as we get close to finding out who the winner is. So I think we've covered everything. And I think we need to give the people at home just an extra little, you know, opportunity to win. So rather than just play it once, we should play it twice. So just so you know, we'll know when the quiz starts because you'll hear a sound like this. Here lies the body of Mary Lee. And you'll know when the quiz finishes because you'll hear a sound like this. So you got your rubbers. <laughs> so remember, folks, listen to those sounds carefully. You'll hear them again in a minute. Identify the movie, head over to the page, tell us who it is, and you might win a skein of Bakery Bear's hand eyed yarn. So, are you ready, contestants? I'm ready. Excellent. Are you sure? Yes. Wonderful. And one of the reasons why. These are nice mitts. You opted to go second, Handsome. didn't you? Yes. Did I? You did. Okay, cool. Because there have been accusations in past seasons of Knit or Forfeit that I have made my questions overly difficult. Yes. So I've gone first with the questions so Kay can then um, adjust her questions appropriately. I haven't even written them yet. No, so. no, of course not. Yeah. Well, why would you? You're no. waiting to see how hard mine are. Absolutely. We know when the quiz starts because you hear a sound like this. Here lies the body of Mary. And that means it's time for question one. And question one is, in fact, we're starting with a picture question. Oh, okay. Now, before I show you the picture, yeah. we're going to go a little bit further and I'm going to give you a little bit of description. This breed of sheep that I'll show you in just a moment is known for its hardiness, long life, fertility, and good mothering abilities. Oh. 
The ewes of this particular sheep, of which the picture you'll see in just a moment, usually produce twins who grow quickly thanks to the high butter fat content of her milk. Its fleece is dense with a fine texture, making it ideal for knitwear, general knitting and felting. Can you name the breed? You of course have the choice to go without seeing the multiple choice. Well, it's a handsome sheep, isn't it? Isn't it? Now, I have been studying the Fleece and Fibre Source book and I, I don't, obviously I don't recognise it because that's never going to happen, is it? So I will need to see the three choices. Okay, the four choices. There's four? There's always been four choices. Really? Yes. I four. thought it was three. How could we do 50-50, take okay. away two right and two right? Clearly I was playing a different quiz game. It is years since we've done this It day. is, So yes. I'll read them to you first. Okay. So your choices are... Yes. Is it a Black Welsh Mountain? Right. Is it a Clun Forest? Right. Is it a Barbados Black Belly? I've not even heard of that one. These are all genuinely real sheep. A Barbados... The sh the sh the sheep in Barbados. I've got no clue, but there's one called a Barbados black belly. Right. Or is it a Corriedale? Can we can we see if he's got a black belly? Has it? Can I see a bigger picture? It's a very small picture. Right. Yes, there is. Okay. I don't think it's got. I mean, it does look a bit darker under there, but I don't think it's particularly got a black belly. Gosh, I've never seen a sheep like it. I can tell you actually that this particular sheep fleece, whatever you call it, I'm sorry about my poor quality terminology. It's a fleece. It's actually listed on the West Yorkshire Spinners website Is as it? one of the Right, well that's quite helpful. Things that gets regularly okay, spun. Okay, right. Let me look at the, the let me look at the sheep again. Well, so I've, remember I've, you heard, have three I've heard of three of them. I've heard of three of them. I, I haven't heard of a Barbados black belly. I was guessing you probably had. No. Black Welsh Mountain, I've definitely heard of. I've got a feeling the Black Welsh Mountain might have horns. Out of all of those, I think the most common fibre to see in knitting yarn is Corriedale, isn't it? But I think that's more spinners. Spinners, I've seen spinners doing that. Clune Forest, you see, I, that's quite a... a a niche, it's quite a rare, a clune forest, I think. <laughs> oh gosh, I don't want to use my lifeline straight but away. as we discussed before, it's better to use a lifeline and get the point. Okay, then. okay, let's go 50-50. Okay, so we'll take away two of the wrong answers. I'm so warm. And I've, uh, I've random generated the taking away of answers okay. so that this can't be you know, accused of being fixed. Right. Okay, okay. so the two remaining answers are... Oh my are gosh! Clun Forest or Barbados Blackbelly. Oh, what do you think? Well, I, I've, I'm going to go Clun Forest. Is that your final answer? Final answer. Is she correct? It's not, it's a black belly. The question was, of course, this breed of sheep is known for hardiness, long life, fertility, good mothering abilities. Its ewes milk produce twins who grow quickly thanks to the high butter fat content of the milk and its fleece is dense with a fine texture, making it ideal for knitwear, general knitting and felting. The question was, could she name the breed? I added extra information in that I told her that it's listed on the West Yorkshire Spinners website. And all of this hyperbole that I'm saying is not my way of getting her to remove items of knitwear due to speaking for so long that she gets <laughs> extremely warm. I shall tell you if I'm you wrong. are correct. I'm wrong, aren't I? Am I wrong? She's correct! Oh. Yay! I'm gonna look that one up in the book up there. It's in the book. It's it's in the book, but Good. I don't remember it looking like that. Right, and it is listed. Uh, there's three really? West fleeces Spinners? listed. Right. I mean, I think they do lots, but they list three as their main ones that and they Clune use the Forest most. Is one of it them. is one of them. Are you ready for question two? Yes. Yes. Oh yes. And of course, you have used one lifeline, so you have two uh -huh. remaining. Right. Okay. You have text a friend, right. and you have uh, ask. Instagram. Okay. And remember, of course, that if you go for the question without the multiple choice, you get two points. Okay. Here we go. Question two. Yes. What woolen item was found... What what item? Woolen item. Right. I thought you said woman item. <laughs> what woolen item was found in the backyard of a 10th century post and wattle building at Coppergate, York, in the original Jorvik excavations? Right. I don't know. So I'll have to see the answers. No, 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 I'll tell you the answers. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, 
The question was, what woolen item was found in the backyard of a 10th century post and wattle building at Coppergate, York in the original excavations? The choices are, was it a hat? Was it a jerkin? Was it a sock? Or was it a mitten? Can I ask a question? Yes. What do you class as a jerkin? Uh, a jerkin is, um, it's got sh short sleeves. It's got like a cap short sleeve. Right, so a short a sleeve jumper is yeah, a jerkin. a short sleeve jumper. <laughs> I'm sure people in 10th century York didn't call it a short sleeve jumper. No, they would have called it a jerkin. A jerkin. Yes. Right. So, right, so a mitten. Yes. A sock. Yes. A short sleeve jumper. Yes. Or a hat. Yes. Well, we know that, we know that socks have been knitted for eons, you know, going back to Egyptian times, don't we? Yes. So it could be a sock. You need to remember the question. The question said, what woolen item? Yeah, I know it said what woolen item. You just, what did you just say? Did you said knitted. socks have been knitted. Yeah, they, it was now bin, binding. It, it wasn't was. Knit. Right, right, okay. Let's let's rule out. I don't think it would be the jerkin. That seems very excessive, doesn't it? I'm thinking sock or mitten. Sock. Is that your final, final answer? Is she right? Will she go to two instead of one? She will. Oh. Yeah. We covered this. In Did we? Our first episode of this season of New Adventures of the Bakery Bears. Oh, clearly I don't pay any attention whatsoever. The That's sock actually exists. Low. You know, they found it, and you can see it in the Jorvik Viking Centre right. Museum. Okay. You consider what you might want to remove. I am not okay. taking anything off. <laughs> okay. Don't go down that route. Question three. Yes. In 1987. The Reverend Monsignor Richard Rutt, widely known as The Knitting Bishop, published his superb book, A History of Hand Knitting. Right. Within that book, he unveiled his research into the history of the relatively modern invention that was the pearl stitch. Oh, right. He discovered that the earliest datable pearl stitches are on the stockings of Eleonora of Toledo. But what century were these knitted? There's no point asking anybody because this is not the sort of question that anybody would know. It's a very popular book, it, it seems. Right, I'm just going to tell me the centuries. It's uh, the 14th century, the 15th century, the 16th century, or the 17th century. What was her name again? It's Eleonora of Toledo. She was an Italian queen. Right, an Italian queen. For those of you at home, this is a picture of those stockings. Uh, in 1987, was that the date? That was when Reverend Monsignor Richard Rutt, widely yeah. known as the Knitting Bishop, published his book. In 1987, I was 16. So I'm going to go for the 16th century. Total guess on just that piece of random information. Is she correct? No. Yes, she is! <laughs> That's hilarious! That's hilarious! That I just answered that on that random thing. Are you ready for question four? I wonder if there'll actually be a question that I actually know without, you know. Here we go. Go on. What is honeycomb mesh? What is honeycomb mesh? Yes. Right. Would you like the multiple choice? Well, I know it's a stitch pattern, but I'm not quite sure how you want me to answer that question. So I better have the multiple choice okay. answers. Okay. Is it an open mesh stitch pattern that forms hexagons when stretched? Oh. Is it a type of fusible fleece, fleece, I couldn't say it, a type of fusible fleece which resembles the look of a honeycomb prior to being ironed onto fabric? He's made that up, hasn't he? Is yeah. it a pattern available to buy from Ravelry by Cassandra Bibler? Is it a technique used to decorate fabric which involves dipping honeycomb into paint and pressing it onto fabric? He's had fun making up these answers, hasn't he? So random. Watch that be a real thing now. Um, I'm going to go for A. Right, D, come on, D is a good, that's a that's good a, one. That's a good one. Come on, it's, it's like potato one. pressing. 
it, it is. Gosh, did you used to do that? Um, I'm gonna go A. Final is your final answer. answer? Yes. She's correct! Well, thank goodness there was something that I had a clue about. I thought you'd get that straight off, to be honest. Well, I didn't know how you wanted me to answer it. Right. So we are on to another picture question. Oh, yes. So the question is this. This famous knitting designer is the owner of Trendsetter Yarns and a past president of the National Needlework Association. His books include The Ultimate Knitted Tea and The Knitter's Template. But who is he? I've heard of Trendsetter Yarns. He started it with his mum. I don't know who that man is, I am sorry to say. It looks like he's wearing a very nice jumper, but I don't know who that man is, so I'll have Do you to think see. he knit that jumper himself? Well, I would hope so. So would I. Yeah. <laughs> he's letting the side down now yeah. if he bought it from Sainsbury's, isn't he? <laughs> okay, are you ready for yeah. the... Okay, so, yeah. is it K Facet? Okay. That's well, hard to say. I don't think, I don't think that's Kaf Facet. Ka thank you, I Ka think Ka it's Kaf or Kaf. No, it might be Kaf. Kaf. I'm not sure, but it's, I don't think that's him. Is it James Norbury? Is it Eugene Borgios? These are all genuinely taken from okay. the top ten okay. male knitting people. Or is it Barry Klein? Okay, I've, I've no idea, but does that man look like a James, a Eugene, or a Barry? I can tell you that this man once knit for 36 hours straight Did when he? he was asked to knit the jumpers for Freddy Krueger in Nightmare on Elm Street. Really? Yes. That's amazing, I he know. knit the jumpers? He did. <gasps> well done. I know. Man whose name I don't know. I know. I think he looks like a Barry. Oh, I don't know. I'm kind of, I'm kind of, James, I don't know, is he a James? For some reason I don't think he looks like Eugene. Oh gosh, what he's gonna be now, isn't he? <gasps> Okay, I'm just going to guess. Barry Klein. Okay. Final answer. That's your final answer? Yeah. Okay, it's too late now to use. It's too late. Because you could have, couldn't you? You could have totally used I could have a used, lifeline. I could have used something. Yeah, oh. Ask Instagram probably would have given you the right How answer. How would I ask, I would have post a picture of him and say, yeah. who's this man? Yeah. Uh, but, you know. It's too late. It's too late for that. It's too late. So we need to find out if she's right or if it's she's not, wrong. It's not Barry. Has she got every question is right it, so is far? It, is it Eugene? She's right! Ah! <laughs> oh my goodness! Doesn't what, he look nice? What's your name? Barry! I know you're not watching, but... Well, from what I've seen, he is an exceptionally lovely man. He looks lovely. He does... A, he does I don't know if these still happen. Maybe you guys know at home if they do or they don't. But you can go on knitting cruises. And he Can't goes on these really? and he does glasses and talks and all sorts. So, it is time. For question six. Wow, I can't oh my goodness. This. this is just so flukish. It must be my lucky day. I should go and put the lottery on. She's absolutely tonight. flying. Okay. The question I was most impressed with was the 16th century one was. I was 16 when that was it, so I'll just go for that. And what that tells you is often you overthink it in quizzes. It's a good job I wasn't 23 that yeah, year, otherwise I, know, I wouldn't have been able to. Done for. Yeah. Right, question six. In 2015, we published the first in your ongoing series of top five yarns of the year. Right. At home, you can access that series and this particular video on page 19 of Knitability issue 14. Mm. Which of these lovely yarn producers did not make the list that year? Okay. Is it A, the Uncommon Thread Tough Sock? Okay. Is it B, Fibre Nymph Dye Works? Is it C, Blacker Swan, mm. or is it D, Hedgerow Yarns? I know, I, I don't recall, oh no, you see I have knit something with that, I didn't, I knit a cowl, didn't I? I designed a cowl with Hedgerow Yarns. And Blacker Swan, I think would be on my top five list every year, so I would, I would say that is. And the Uncommon Thread Tough Sock is one of my absolute favourites for socks, so I'm pretty sure that would be on there. Fibre Nymph, now I have knit a few pairs of socks with Fibre Nymph and it's totally possible that that year, you know, I knit a particular pair or a particular couple of pairs that I loved. Oh, but then you see, it's, it's, either, it's either Fibre Nymph or Hedro Yarns. 
I'm trying to think because I think to be honest the only socks I've knit with Fibre Nymph was the Nyan Cat but that could have been that year that I knit those. It could have been that year. I'm going to go hedgerow yarns because I think the cowl I knit, I designed, was after 2015. I'm going to go hedgerow yarns. Okay. So, did she get it right? Has she got six out of six? Well, unfortunately, you're going to have to come back oh. in part two of Knit or Forfeit to find out. So, thank you so much for watching this first part, and we'll see you later on in the show, where we'll find out if she has got all her questions right so far. I hate it when they do that on quiz shows. We want to know what the answer is. You'll have to tune in later on in the show to find out. Are you playing along and you're answering the questions? Oh my goodness. And did you recognize the, the sounds from the movie, Don't Say Anything? I'm not saying anything. Don't give anything away. Just look down in the show notes below and there's a competition link that everyone can access. And all you do is you just head over there it tells you what to do on the, on the, you know, on the link anyway, but um, just head over there and tell us what you think the movie is. And also just tell us who you are as well. So we know who's won. Yes. <laughs> so either your Ravelry name or, or your name. And then next episode, so episode 112, will tell you who won. And I'll show you the yarn. Game. Yes, then. yes. Game of yarn. Keep it a surprise. But then, you know, if you don't win, don't panic because you've got another three chances to win. Oh, yes. How exciting. Three more different movies. The first movie, Kay picked. Right. The second movie, I'm picking. And then you can pick a movie, and then I'll pick a movie. Okay. Exciting. Tune in later on in the show, and you will find out how Kay does at the end of her round. And you'll also hear that second clip again, so another chance for you to think, what's the movie, and come over and enter the competition. But now it's time for us to find out. Kay Jones, what's off your needles? <laughs> Well, I just have the one thing. These are my Peter socks. So this is the second pattern in my Miss Potter sock club. And it only seemed right to have a Peter sock, really, didn't it? You know, it's Peter Rabbit is obviously the main main character that everybody knows and loves. Ooh! And these are the socks, which... You are know, they supposed to be rabbit footprints? They are rabbit footprints. <laughs> so these are my socks i'll hold them quite close and the little stitch pattern that's in there is meant to represent or does represent in my my brain peter's little paw prints as he's wandering through mr mcgregor's garden going up and down collecting all the radishes and lettuces and carrots and everything else that he pinches out of the garden so it's his little paw prints it's a really sweet little stitch and it's very fun and very simple to work and it produces such a, a cute little stitch. If I hold it quite close you might be able to sort of look. It probably just looks like a little blip on the screen but when you look at it up close part of it is like a little pronounced V and then there's also like a little sort of extra bumpy bit just next to it. And it just reminded me of a little rabbit's paw print going through the vegetable patch. Yeah, these are top down. All of the, the socks in the collection are knit top down because that's just my favorite way to knit socks. And it has a two by two twisted cuff rib, which oh. I think is super pretty. And if, if you are the type of person that doesn't have the neatest rib, you know, when because I know I've heard a lot of people say that when they're knitting rib, it's a, it looks a bit untidy. If you twist your knit stitches, it really neatens everything up. So this is a great rib for people that maybe have that, that issue. So it's a two by two twisted rib, and then it runs into this lovely little paw print pattern. So yeah, I called this cute little stitch the hop stitch because I thought that was very appropriate. So you've got the hop stitch hopping down your sock, a lovely heel flap and heel turn. And then in this pair, I decided to put my rounded sort of wedge toe. So the previous pattern had my umbrella toe, but this one I decided to put in a nice wedge toe. What did you do your tutorial on for this pattern? The tutorial that I added in, the video tutorial for this pattern, 
is how I join in the round to minimise the jog that you can get. And um, I totally, you, we need to spend some time on, on that because I need to start implementing this. Oh, right, this. okay. It's, it's sort of wrong that I haven't been implementing no, this. Well, it is wrong, really. Well, genuinely. I'm, You've I'm filmed being, me doing it. Well, <laughs> I realise that and I'm being genuinely serious that I, I feel like, I think, first of all, I've obviously been doing a lot of DPN knitting yeah, and yeah. I know you can do it with DPNs. Yeah. I could yeah. just do it with maybe some instruction right. as to, because I just get a bit nervous. All oh, right, <laughs> okay. So yeah, I mean, obviously this is Magic Loop, but it's perfectly possible using DPNs. And it just, it really does. I've been using this. It's phenomenal, this, Kay. Yeah, I've been using this technique for, gosh, I don't know how many socks now. I must have done it at least a dozen times. And I've had a great result every time. Had I implemented it on this hat, yeah, which I'll show yeah. you next episode, I that wouldn't have that horrendous jog. to the jog, yeah. yeah, yeah. Whereas it's, you look at that sock and it's like... It's, it's a much smoother join. So there's a video tutorial in this pattern on how I did that. And the yarn that I used for these socks, I think, is just gorgeous. It's just beautiful and it was perfect. It was just perfect. And this is from lovely Kelly, Kelly Lay at Lay Family Yarn. And the colour is Vintage China. This is my leftovers. So it's, it's just these tiny little specks of a sort of Peter Rabbit jacket blue. And then like a mauve sort of purpley colour. And I just thought it was perfect. And I've paired it with a River Knits Mini again. I think, I can't remember the exact colour, but it's in the pattern. Um, it's, it's in the indigo family, I think. But I just thought that colour picked up the blue and also is reflective of Peter's jacket. Now, my, test, my lovely test knitter, Sarah. Sarah Hepworth has helped me no end with this collection and she's test knit all of the patterns for me. She's just been brilliant, you know, and I've asked her a million questions about them and, you know, is this okay? Do you like this? Do you probably driven her absolutely bonkers, but she's just brilliant. So thank you so much, Sarah, for that. And Sarah knit her sample of this pattern in some yarn that I actually sent her. I bought a skein of yarn from Sherry Iris and Sherry Iris dyes a whole range of kind of Peter Rabbit inspired colorways. And she did one that was called Peter Rabbit. So I bought a skein of that and I sent that to Sarah along with a mini to knit her socks and she did that and it was just lovely, just worked out perfectly. Yeah, that's the Peter pattern. Now Kelly will be having a shop update. Her next shop update is on 2nd of November, 7pm GMT and there is going to be some vintage china in that update if you wanted to try and grab a skein or you know, I think to be honest, any of Kelly's sort of speckled yarns that look like this would just be perfect. It would look lovely in self-striping, I think. I think it would work brilliantly well with self-striping. Obviously tonals, semi-solids would be great. I wouldn't go too madly variegated with it. That's the only thing I would say because I think it might disguise the little paw prints a little bit. But other than that, I think you're pretty good, you know, with your yarn choices. And the tutorial that we mentioned, just while I remember, Bakery Bear patrons, you've actually already had that. So uh, I'll link it below, but yeah, you got a sneak peek of that tutorial. So um, go on, carry on. Sorry for cutting. So, in. no, that, that's it. So that's, that really is it really from a Peter Socks. Everybody will have received an update in their Ravelry libraries with the pattern. If you purchased the, you know, the, if you've purchased the club already, if you haven't purchased it, if you want to purchase it now, you would get the two patterns that have already come out. And then you'll just be waiting for the third one. The third pattern comes out on the 23rd of November. So that's the third and final pattern. And actually that pattern is the first pair that I knit uh, out of all three of them. Right. So yeah, so and that that was the pair that really sort of triggered my inspiration for the whole, whole the whole collection. So that'll be fun when that one comes out. So yeah, get knitting your Peter socks. I hope you really enjoy them. I really enjoyed knitting the pattern. It's, as I've been talking about this whole episode really, it's the sort of pattern that just keeps you motivated. There's something to do and something to look forward to. And it's, it's just, Another sound of weird, didn't no, it? No, no, it doesn't sound weird at all. To, but, but you know, when it comes to me and knitting socks, I always look forward to the yeah. end. Oh right, okay. <laughs> 
So that's well, the great thing. When I'm in socks. The end would come quicker yes, yes. if that's what you look forward when, to. When I'm in socks, there is always something to look forward to. Finishing. Yeah. Right. Fair enough. It's funny that, isn't it? <laughs> right. The, the, the tender hooks. I wonder where that expression... I know where that expression comes from. I'm a genius. I've fed you that line beautifully. On tender hooks? Yes. Well, we were watching one of the Michael Portillo programmes, yes. as we do on yes. a regular basis, and he actually visited a weaving factory. And it tenter hooks are the kind of the things at the side of your loom that tension the fabric. Right. So when you're on tenter hooks, you're like tense, you know? Right. That's where it comes from. Well, poor Kay has been sat in an awful lot of knitted garments on tenter hooks <laughs> for the last 12, 13 minutes. So I think we should go back to Knit or Forfeit and find out how she finishes off her own. Welcome back. And the tension is palpable. Yeah, I have been sat here that whole time. Yes, yes. I made us sit there. In 25 for 20 knitted minutes. items on a day that's quite warm. Oh yes. So, what is the answer? In 2015, we published the first year ongoing series of top five yarns of the year. Which of these lovely yarn producers did not make the list that year? You can see the choices below. Kay went with D, Hedgerow Yarns. Was she correct? Yes, she was! Yay! Oh yes, six out of six. What a start. And some of these questions have been quite tough. They've been very tough and it's just been lucky guesses, let me tell you. You ready for question seven? Yes. What is the best way to describe a wool top? This is something to do with spinning. Yes. I know nothing about spinning. So you're gonna need the multiple choice, aren't you? Yes. Yes, okay. So what's the best way to describe a wool top? Is it fiber is hand carded and pulled from the cards forming a fluffy roll of fiber? Fiber is carded into a long continuous cord that's two to three inches thick. This preparation is best suited to wool and spinning. Is it? Fibre is drum carded and pulled from the drum carder forming a blanket? Or is it, the process requires the wool to be scoured and combed and sorted. The long fibres resulting from this process are in a form ready for spinning. Don't know. <laughs> and I, whilst he was asking those, I was just thinking, who do I know that spins that I could ask? But I think the people I would instantly think of are in the States and they wouldn't be awake at this time. The choices, again, are fibre is hand carded and pulled from the cards forming a fluffy roll of fibre. What do you think that might be? Sounds like a roll lag. Right. Fibre is carded into a long continuous cord that is two to three inches thick. This preparation is best suited to wool and spinning. You see, that sounds like what I'm using for the thrummed mittens at the moment, because that was just one long continuous piece about right. two to three inches thick. And what's that? Do I don't know, I have right. no idea. <laughs> Fibre is drum carded and pulled from the drum carder, forming a blanket. You see, it could be that, couldn't it? I've seen... Oh, now is that a bat? What's a bat? I don't know. And the fourth one? The process requires that the wool be scoured, washed and combed and sorted. The long fibres resulting from the process are in a form ready for spinning. And this preparation is actually best suited to worsted spinning. Right. I don't know. I honestly don't know. But there's the first three, it sounds like they've had quite a lot of um, preparation, doesn't it? The fourth one doesn't sound like there's been that, mu that much preparation, but maybe I'm totally wrong. I'm going to go with the fourth one. D. Okay. Is she correct? No. Yes, she is! Oh. Seriously, I'm, I'm going to go and get a lottery ticket. Well done. Kind of speechless. Okay. And I'm going to be dialing up the questions now a little bit more. Well, we'll see how I do in the next round. Well, no, 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 that's not right. You need to prepare the questions fairly on the back of what I've just done. So not on your score. But I, I you know how to yes. prepare okay. questions okay. fairly. I don't need education. That's fine. Me. I apologise. I apologise. Okay, so here we go with question number eight. Are you ready? Yes. Contours is, is a it, pattern. Is it a geography lesson? Published. On Ravelry in January 2016. Contours. It's listed in the category of shawls, wraps. 
is described as being born from a love of natural woolly goodness and garter stitch in equal measure. But who designed it? Any ideas? No. Okay, so the choices are A, Melanie Beck. That did come to mind. B, Louise Tilbrook. C, Martina Bem. Uh, did I get that right? Yes, I th well, I think so. Okay. It's either Bem or Beam. I don't know. Okay. I don't know how to pronounce that. Or is it D, Hoagie Locatelli? My initial thoughts were, were that it was somebody like Martina Beam, Bem, or Melanie Berg. I don't think it's Louise. Tilbrook, well, no, I don't, mm, I don't, I only think it's not Louise Tilbrook because I recently was looking through her patterns because she's got lots of sock patterns. I don't recall seeing that many shawls, but obviously I could be completely wrong. Hohi Locatelli, I know quite a lot of her, the names of her designs, just because she's knitted so frequently, um, and I don't recall that one. But again, I could be totally wrong. So I'm... Um, it's, it's our, Remember, um, you have two lifelines. Yeah, I know. Melanie Berg. Okay. Final answer. You sure? Do you want to use a lifeline? No, I'm not sure. No, I don't want to use I'm quite stubborn about lifelines. <laughs> yes, I'm going to go Melanie Berg. Final answer? Yeah. Is she correct? She's wrong! Oh, oh no! It had to happen. Yeah, it did. It's Louise Tilbrook. It's Louise Tilbrook. Louise, I'm so sorry. Who will be interviewed in a future issue oh, of Knitability. I'm sorry, Louise. I'm Shocking. Just, I want to go and look at that one now yeah. and see what it's like. It looks beautiful. Oh, well. Okay, so, she was doing great. She's still doing great, but she's got her first question wrong. You've got two Ew. questions to go. Okay. Okay. So, question nine. Yeah. What was the first cardigan you ever knitted? The first cardigan? Yes. Right, okay. Don't know. Okay, the choices are as follows. Yeah. Is it A, yeah. the February sweater by Pamela Wynn? Right. Is it B, the Shalom... These are all cardies. Yeah. Is it B, the Shalom cardigan by Megan McFarlane? Yeah. Is it C, The Old Man and the Sea by Melski? Yeah. Or is it D, The Basic Chic Hoodie by Bonnie Marie Burns? <laughs> that's what I've got on. How funny. That, that's what this purple thing is, that fourth answer. So I know it's not this one. Would you like to know how long it took you to knit this? I don't know. Two months. Is that all it was? You, well, you're in for a shock. Because I'm going to tell you how long it took you to knit all of these. Right, okay. Not very long, I would have thought, because this was pre-podcast and... You knit in a different way. I knit in a different way and yeah. I was more... You also wasn't I was, designing then, really. I wasn't designing. I was more no. monogamous, that word. Yeah. Right. Well, I think it might be the Shalom. That's like a short-sleeved... I don't think it's the February lady sweater. I'm sure... I'm going to go Shalom. Okay. So, the choices were... A, the February sweater by Pamela mm. Wynn, which mm. you knit in 2012, and you knit it in 20 days. Did I really? Uh, another That's choice... That's short-sleeved as well, though, to be fair. Another choice was the Shalom Cardigan by Megan McFarlane, which you lit, knit in 2012, and you knit that in five days. What? Yeah. Here's the biggest shock. Yeah. Uh, it could be The Old Man and the Sea mm. by Melski. Mm. How long do you think it took you to knit that? I remember knitting it, and it was fairly traumatic. A month. 21 days. <gasps> no way. Yes. Would you like to know if you were correct? Yes, tell me if I was correct. Was I correct? She was! Ah. It's been the Shalom Cardigan. You see, I think at the time everybody was knitting that Shalom. But I, and I, rem I remember, knit I think I just knit it for the experience of knitting it because right. obviously I'd never knit anything no. like that before. Five days, Kate. Five days, I think it's chunky, to be fair. It was a chunky yarn, I think. You can see it, it's on your rubbery page. I think it obviously. was blue. Right. Was it, I think I can't it was remember. blue. Beautiful. Wow. Okay, so she currently has got eight out of nine. Superb effort, she's used one lifeline so far. We're on to question 10. This is the final question, the final okay. picture question. Oh, a picture. Yes. I like the picture ones. Okay, so. In a moment, I'm gonna show you a jumper that yeah. was released to buy on rubbery in October, 2017. Right, a year ago, right, yes. right, okay. It currently has 2,595 projects wow. listed on Ravelry. 
Okay. It's a fingering weight yoke sweater worked from the top down yeah. featuring lace, colour work and texture on the body. Right. Can you name the designer? And for an extra point, can you name the design? Do you know what it is? I recognise it. Everybody in the room call was knitting this. Clearly, <laughs> you can see that from the projects. I'm going to have to see the options. I've, I know, do you know, when I see the answers, I'll know it, I think. Okay. I wish I'd made the answers harder. Is it... <laughs> is it A, Caitlin Hunter? Is it B, Gudrun Johnston? Is it C, Susan B. Anderson? Or is it D, Nora Backland? It's Caitlin Hunter. You sure? Yeah, I think so. You don't use a lifeline? No. I'm pretty sure it's Caitlin Hunter. Now I've seen the names, I'm, it's Caitlin Hunter. Everybody's knitting Caitlin Hunter at the moment, aren't they? So you're so sure it's Caitlin Hunter, you're now just trying to think of the name of the design. I am, but to get I, your don't, extra points. I don't think I'm going to guess certain. Okay. I'll know it. You know, you're all shouting it. Two and a half thousand of you have knit it, clearly, so you're all shouting it at me. I know you are. I'm sure it's Caitlin Hunter. Okay. So that's your final answer? Yes. And you don't know what the... I can't remember the name of it. Was she correct? So many of you will know that she was! Yay! I can't remember that. I wish I could remember. So Kate has scored 9 out of 10. She could have got 10 out of 10 had oh. she known yeah. that it's called the Zweg. Z the Zweig or Zweig. whatever it is. Oh. That is the end of the questions in this first round. And we know that the quiz is finished because we hear a sound like this. See so you got your rubbers. <laughs> and Kay has scored an absolutely phenomenal nine out of and ten. And I kept all my clothes on. <laughs> You'll all be delighted to know that so, I did. So, we need to do a count, actually. So, oh, right, OK. Yes. So Socks. So that's one. Yeah. Uh, mittens. Two. I've got my... Um, what's it called? Irish coffee. Irish coffee. Three. Cardigan. Four. Cowl. Five. Shawl. Six. And hat. Seven. You look Seven. like you've just been to Rhinebeck. <laughs> Imagine if I turned up to Rhinebeck looking like this, they'll, they'll, they'll be all like, oh, don't go near that bakery bear over there, I think she's lost her mind. I forgot what happened. Seven, seven, sure? seven, 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 seven. <laughs> so one, I two, Len. three, four, five, six, seven. I'm not into Shirley Ballas at all, six, I'm afraid. Seven. But Although we I like did, Alfonso. I did love Alfonso. Well, I want Alfonso, Alfonso to stay forever. Alfonso's a genius. We are, of course, talking about Strictly Come Dancing. Strictly. And Alfonso was a guest judge. He was. From Dancing for the Stars. And he was marvellous. And he was super. I loved him. So. Crumbs, the music, oh my goodness. So that is the end of our first round of Knit or Forfeit. Nine out of ten. Kay scored nine Come out on. of ten. Team K. Team K, hashtag Team K, hashtag Team Dan. I will be back along with K, who will be asking the questions in our next episode, which will be I out in two weeks. I have got to wear this get-up. You can wear whatever you like, and I will be wearing as many knitted items as I possibly can. Remember that you can enter to win that, be that beautiful skein of uh, Bacon Best hand dyed yarn by identifying this sound. Here lies the body of Mary Lee. Or this sound. So you got your rubbers. <laughs> And that, ladies and gentlemen, I think is it. So, thank you so much for watching. And there's only one question I've got to ask for you. Are you ready to knit or forfeit? <laughs> Woohoo! Now, first of all, before we talk about that first round of knit or forfeit, uh, Kay's making me apologise for putting on my hinge and bracket voice prior to us going into that second what part. What kind of voice, high-pitched voice was that? So yes, I sincerely apologise for my hinge and bracket voice. It certainly was not intentional. But what a round! Knit or Forfeit is back! Nine out of ten. Yes! That, I tell you what, that was just complete guesswork. Especially the age 16 and 16th century thing. That was hilarious. I don't think there can be any criticism also apportioned at me for the creation of those questions because I, I think I realised that but you know in previous you know ep seasons of, of yeah. Little Forfeit yeah. you know there has been accusations yeah. that my questions haven't been altogether fair yes that well, would be correct accusations I think that, that they were perfectly fair they, oh yeah I didn't think they were unfair good I didn't That's know the answer to pretty much any of them excellent <laughs> but you know I think they were fair questions and I think that instinct when you're you know within 
a field of you know knitting you're within the field of knitting your instinct you know when you know a certain amount of stuff yeah. takes you an awful long uh, way it was kind of a, a process of elimination and educated guesses yes I think. yeah i'm yeah. particularly impressed with the legend that clearly is barry klein yeah. but then also finding out about it's so fun researching the questions and actually what i remember knit or forfeit is something which we have to edit down quite hard so that is a condensed version of the show that you just mm. saw so as we did with the Pudding Club and as we did with the New Adventures, we produce a special gold edition, which is the unedited version. So there's lots more footage and that now is available for gold and platinum patrons. In researching this, just like we do New Adventures Pudding Club, you know, we get lots of areas, you know, researching questions as you're going to have to do now mm -hmm. uh, for mine. And finding out the names of these, you know, male knitting dudes, mm -hmm. Eugene Borgios, I think that name is right, yeah. him and his wife, Right. Created amazing Fair Isle jumpers. Wow. But then Kay Fassett. Oh, I know him. He's right. very famous. Well, he, it said the thing I found said he used to have a show on the BBC. Yeah, he, back in the kind of. Oh, I don't, would it be 60s? Is that right. too far back? But he produces these very flamboyantly, brightly coloured right. garments, right. You know, which was very 60s, I think, wasn't right. it? That kind of... He looks like a real dude, oh, he looks like yeah, a nice yeah, chap. Yeah. I have put in the gold edition, I've put all the, the, the sources that, you know, we, we, that I used for the creation of those questions. Next episode, I will be back to undertake my first round. I know. How gosh. unbelievably exciting. Yeah. Oh, yes. Turn. So... Create some super hard questions. Yeah. Well, no, fair questions, Kay. Well, fair but hard. Those were hard questions, I thought. You got nine out of ten. Yeah, but I'd said to you, that's just really... A lot of those were just educated guesses. And I also... I expect to get... I would have thought I might have scored five or six, to be honest. Wonderful, wonderful effort from Kay in... She only told me at the end of filming she deliberately did not use text a friend and ask the audience because we wanted to keep the return of knit or forfeit as a total surprise yeah. for all of you guys. So, so I didn't want to put anything on Instagram because you would have known what we yes. were doing because yeah. we've obviously filmed that a few days ago. So. It's the Endy Bits. Endy Bits. Now then, Philosopher's Cal Cal. Oh, it's been tricky to say that. Yes, it's nearing the end. The Philosopher's Cowl Knit Along concludes on Halloween. So I will close the thread on the 1st of November and we will announce the prize winner on the next podcast. Cool. That's exciting. Yeah. And following on in the vein yep. of cows that are tricky to say. <laughs> You're going to love this. Please tell us. Okay. We thought it would be fun to do a little festive knit along. So we are going to start a two month knit along that's going to run from the 1st of November so very soon, 1st of November through to the 31st of December, so the very end of December. And we are going to run the Christingle Mingle knit along. Don't you love that? How cute is that? It works on so many levels because, you know, as you said, it reminds us of those amazing chocolates, which we did speak about last Christmas, actually. Mingles. Because I remember, I remember mm. going and searching and finding know, and putting it in a, an episode. Mingles were lovely. We love those mingles. Because I think what was so lovely about them is, Kay, for my birthday, you very kindly got me some Bendix, yeah. which are really, really nice, and I really like them. But because... the. They're just a bit darker. Yeah. Mingles were a bit more sweeter. They were. So yeah, they were a bit more milky. Mil yeah, milk. Mil what a shame yeah. they've got. Mingles were great. Someone needs to bring them back. We also found some vintage, you found some vintage chocolates. Oh, I did. I was in Have you super, seen those vintage I was sets? in Superdrug of all places the other day. Superdrug, if you're not in this country, is like a, a chemist, a pharmacy, whatever you would call it. But they do makeup and you know all kinds of things. And at the till, they had these packs of Cadbury's vintage chocolate bars and they were wrapped up like they used to be so the wrappers looked like they used to look and I always wondered when you open them up would they have used the old moulds well they and had and it's not they look yeah they look like yeah. they used to look used so it's more moulds. of a sort of square look isn't yeah. it than the rounded it's great. ones it's great still eating they them. were fun yeah. it's fun yeah. sorry carry on so yes Christi the Christingle the Mingle the Christingle Mingle knits along now I'll explain it if needs a jingle it does need it. Oh, the jingle for the, the Christingle, Christingle Mingle, Mingle Jingle. jingle. <laughs> I shall try and source a Christingle Mingle Jingle. 
Christingle, if you don't know what that word means, a Christingle is a symbolic object that is used in Advent services, quite often with children. So it's like a children's Advent service. Bryony had a couple of these when she was in primary school. And the Christingle itself is an object which symbolises, basically, Christingle means the light of Christ or something similar. So you get a candle which symbolizes Christ and then it's an it's usually an orange. The orange symbolizes the world. You then get a red ribbon around the orange which is I think it's the blood of Christ actually. Um, the candle and then also quite often you'll get like dried fruits and things stuck into the orange and that symbolizes the fruits of the earth and the seasons and right. all things right. like that and it's used within usually children's services isn't yeah. it in christian christian churches certainly in this cool. country i don't know worldwide whether it's a thing but it's quite a you know it's quite a common thing that we see here isn't yeah. it and it's also just a lovely word <laughs> I just really like the word. It sounds festive, doesn't it? Christingle. And it rhymes with mingle. Yeah, so and Pringle. let's and Pringles. Basically all the knit along is is just gonna be a way of us getting our Christmas knits done and finished before the big day. So you can knit anything you like, you can have works in progress are totally fine so if you've started your christmas knitting already totally fine you can enter that so anytime you finish an item pop that finished item into the fo thread and we'll have some lovely fest so a couple of the prizes are quite festive i've got some yarn that's festive that i've dyed up we've also got some yarn from lovely heather haynes she sent us some yarn to use as a prize uh, we've got some patterns as well, one from Jen Sheelan and then another one from Heather as well. So and Natalie I'll Sheldon. show and Natalie Sheldon, of yeah, course. Yeah. Lovely Natalie yeah. has just designed a gorgeous pair of socks, Fair Isle, they're beautiful. Yeah. She's donated a couple of those patterns as well yeah. to the the prize pot. So I'll show and talk about the prizes a bit more on the next podcast. Yeah. But we just wanted to let you know. So I'm gonna open a thread, there'll be a chatter thread and an FO thread on the Ravelry group. So get knitting your Christmas themed, get not even themed really, it doesn't have to be Christmas themed, anything that you're knitting for Christmas basically. And just a lovely little way of us mingling together and knitting all our gifts for Christmas and getting those all finished up in good time. Cool. You have some yarn, let's have a look. Yeah, I bought a couple of skeins of yarn. Now, I'm knitting at the moment a design and I'm using a yarn from Eden Cottage Yarns. Lovely. And when I ordered it, I, the bases are 75-25 and I just thought it was going to be the kind of standard 75-25 that most dyers tend to use. It wasn't. It's a 75-25 but it's a shorter yardage. It's 400 metres instead of 425 I think normally, isn't it? And it's, it's woollier. It's a bit woollier. It just felt different. So I by chance came across the same base in another shop. And I've wanted to order from this particular shop for a while, so it was a good excuse to do that. And it's Martin's Lab. Got here very quickly, actually. And it's this same base. So it's 75-25 merino nylon, but it's 400 metres. So it's a bit plumper and it's a bit more woolly. And I picked up two colours. I've got Carousel. He's very good at speckles, isn't he, Martin? I've got Carousel, which is this beautiful grey with lots of bright neon pops. And then this one, which I think is my favourite, this one is Mango Mania, which is this beautiful peachy orangey colour with lots and lots of speckles. So I just, I really like this base. I've almost finished knitting the thing that I'm knitting in it and it, it blocks, I've blocked part of it already and it blocks out really nicely. And I've just enjoyed knitting with it. So I thought I'd grab a couple of those to try out. And then the, the last thing really I want to talk about is the yarn that I was trying to pull apart earlier in my demonstration. Can you remember I bought the skein of Mad Tosh Twist Light, which again is a 75-25, but this one is only 384 metres, so it's really quite plump. And you get, is it 100 grams? It will be, I think, won't it? It doesn't say, but I'm presuming it's 100 grams. And it's in the Grace Notes colour. Now, I, well, I thought I'll... 
I was considering using this yarn for a design, so I thought, right, I'll wind it up. When I unfurled the skein and looked at it, I thought, do you know what? It looks like the speckles are mainly on one half and there wasn't too many speckles. They were kind of, all the, the majority of the speckles were like all around the outside of the skein and the inside of the skein didn't look very speckly. So I was like, oh, is this gonna be one of those skeins, you know, where you get, that can sometimes happen. So I thought, right, okay, let's just wind it and see. And when I wound it, I thought that's, it, it does to me look like that's the case. If you look at the outside, can you see how very, very speckly it is? But then when you look inside, you can see there's not a lot of speckling going on really. You can see all the speckles here and there's not too many here. So I thought, right, okay, maybe it's my imagination. I'll go and look on Ravelry. So I looked on Ravelry at this base, different colors, and I did see quite a few sock projects where one sock was very speckled and the other sock wasn't very speckled at all. Now, this again is a personal, it's a personal choice, isn't it? You know, some people have heard them say, that doesn't bother them at all, don't mind that. It does bother me, I'll be honest. I, you know, if I'm knitting a pair of socks in something like a speckled yarn, I want no speckles on, on both socks, you know, I want, I want them to look, yet they can never be exactly the same, it's a hand-dyed skein, isn't it, at the end of the day? But I want the speckles to run all the way through the skein and not just, you know, predominantly on one half of it. No, what you're um, asking for is an even dye job. Uh, yeah, and, because and if I you know, put a picture, if you did, for example, if you did a sock design and you used those socks, yeah, I would and you knit one sock and it looked all predominant and one that didn't, people would look at it and yeah, think, I, hold on a minute. Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't use this for a design because, you know, I want, I want the design to be shown off in the best possible way. And I think for, you know, for one sock to be lesser speckled than the other, I just wouldn't be comfortable doing you know, I just wouldn't be comfortable doing that. And I don't necessarily feel like I've wasted my money, but I am wondering what I'm gonna knit with this now because I don't want a pair of, I bought this to knit a pair of socks. This is, you know, people who buy this yarn are gonna buy it, I think primarily for knitting socks because it's really a sock type base. You know, I guess what you could do is get two skeins of it and alternate if you were knitting, you Who's know, a shawl. For the well, I know, and but if you were knitting a shawl with it, you in you need, you know, you could you could get two and alternate one from the centre of the skein, one from the outside or whatever, so that that was then more graduated. And then I thought, well, maybe I could double it and you know pull one from the middle and one from the outside. But I didn't buy this to do that. You know, I bought this because I wanted to knit a pair of socks with it. I don't want a pair of socks that are going to look very different so i'm kind of disappointed in that you know especially a big company like mad tosh in terms of of dyers you know compared to hand dyers like myself you know i'm i'm tiny com compared to a a company like mad tosh i i kind of when i dye yarn i am very conscious that i don't want things like this to happen i mean you you can't ever rule out that something you know is is gonna something like that might happen because it's a hand dyed thing and you know i dye in very small batches i only dye two skeins of yarn in a pot i don't ever dye any more than that in one pot whereas mad tosh are obviously going to dye a lot more in whatever system they use it's not a cheap skein of yarn and i bought this skein of yarn because i wanted to knit socks with it and now i'm feeling that i can't knit socks with it because i won't like the finished product so that's got to be disappointing really, hasn't it? And I just don't know what I'm gonna do with it now and that's a real shame. Lots going on in the next couple of weeks. Oh yes, the, the next patron-only podcast will be, actually, it, it's tomorrow. Yes, it's tomorrow. If you're watching this on Friday. It's tomorrow at 2 p.m. BST. That's the live version and then the recording will go live on our Patreon page on Monday. And we will, of course, be back in two weeks with more. It will be time, as we know, for my round of Knit All Four Fifths. Yes. And yes, it is time to get excited about the Baker Bears website. Yay. Oh, yes. I shall be beavering away at all hours. <laughs> It has, the, been. Yes. it has been. Yes, and I shall be continuing like to do asking that. Asking me random questions at random times of day and like saying, look at this, look, I'm like, oh, half asleep. So, yes, yeah. finally, we will have a lovely home. Yeah. 
a lovely home for, for I can't say it. <laughs> a lovely home for Francisco. There's some things that are hard to say. There are. Like Chris Dingle Mingle. Yes. <laughs> No, no, that's not hard to say. No, that's fun that's to say. That's fun to say. Yes. Yes. Like Francisco. I'm going to enjoy saying Chris Dingle Mingle. That's perfect. Oh, and that'll be a great hashtag, won't it, as well? Hashtag on Instagram, Chris Dingle Mingle. Kay plucks out of the air the other day. What's your favourite Christmas movie of all time? <laughs> Look, it's October. Just give us a minute to just always, get into the swing of things. Well, I always kind of get festive at this time of year, and then come, up, come December, I'm over it. Which... Well, no, no. Well, that didn't happen last year and it's not going to happen this year. Okay. Well, it's not right. All right. Well, it's not right, is it? No. That's the problem. Okay. You know, you have to flow evenly. I know. I'll stop listening to the Christmas no, no, music. No. There's um, nothing wrong with listening to Christmas music at all. I haven't I think, been watching any films yet. I think that there is an issue with... It, it, society cr has created a bit of a problem because people see things in shops that's and they're the like, trouble, no, isn't no, it? no, yeah, no, it's a disaster. Look, I do it's think too early. that... Well... It is and it isn't. You know, you can open your mind to it, mm. or you can close your mind to it, because I think what then happens is, w what I used to do, and that is you, and everyone used to do this, didn't they? Because, you know, y your mum would get in all this stuff, and you'd say, mum, can I eat that? And no, 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 I'm saving it for I'm Christmas. It for Christmas. And then Christmas comes, and it's one day, and then you haven't eaten half the stuff. No. And then it's just it's just weird. Yeah. So just be in the moment, enjoy every moment. You want to watch Christmas movies? We had some Christmas watch... pudding again the other day. Didn't we? Absolutely. <laughs> but see, you want to watch Christmas movies? You watch Christmas movies. Put on the black and white one with the wings. Well, that one I would have had to have got the DVD out for. I just wanted something on to choose something on Amazon Prime. That one. You should. Not on. Is it not? No. They are naughty, aren't it's they? It's a Wonderful Life. It's not on Amazon Prime. Not oh, for us anyway. No. Crumbs. I know. They should remake that movie. White like Christmas is not. That was on Amazon Prime because right. I once watched it. Plus, yeah. It's not anymore. White Things Christmas. Things come and go, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. So thank you so much for watching, and we will see you Thanks, in everybody. two weeks for more. Not quitting for Ben and Kate and Bakery Bears. They'll take you to fabulous places of which their favorites they'll share. You better buy a pad and get yourself a bakery bear. You'll find yourself in a castle while watching the bakery bears. It never feels like a hassle to sit and watch the bakery. Sandra Shepherd